Okay guys, hello everyone. This is Meech from Meech Tarantulas. And I would like to talk about something today. So, um, not that long ago, I think it was in um, September, I think. I went to an expo in um, Houghton. Uh, this is like the biggest, one of the biggest reptile expos in the Netherlands. And uh, I went there looking for Halloween crabs because um, one time on Google, I saw these crabs and I was like, oh, these look pretty cool. So I googled how to care for them and then the first few links I was like, that looks pretty easy. Well, as with a lot of animals, what you google on them in the first few links isn't usually very right. So um, I want to talk to you guys a bit about Halloween crabs, their place in the hobby and how they're properly cared for it, and why they really aren't that great of a pet and you should really think twice before getting them. So um, I bought these two from um, a seller at the um, Reptile Expo. I bought a male and a female. It's pretty easy to tell them apart. You just look at the other side and you can instantly tell like this is a male or a female. Thinking like, oh, maybe one day I'll get like baby Halloween crabs. I wasn't thinking about breeding them, but I wasn't going to exclude the option. If you get what I mean, I wanted a pair because um, apparently, apparently, like according to the internet, they're a communal crap. So I was like, it'll be better for the crap to like have some company if they're communal rather than just live solitary, right? And that was the seller told me as well. It was like, can I keep these together? And he's like, yeah, 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 sure you can. And like I was like, okay, I've got this size enclosure. This is okay. And he's like, yeah, it's perfect. So it's like, awesome, cool. So I got the crabs. Turns out the enclosure that I asked the guy about was smaller than the minimum requirements. So I had to buy a bigger enclosure. The crabs themselves were dirt cheap, like 10 euros for a crab, for, for like a pretty big crab, like a crab the size of your hand, it's like only 10 euros, so I was like, wow, that's a good deal. Yeah, so um, for caring for them, the care that's recommended to you online and by most people really isn't that great. And there's a lot of misinformation in OLs as well. So I'm going to tell you my experience with the crab and how to properly care for them. So first of all, you really shouldn't keep them together. I've read so many posts of people saying their crab got eaten by other ones. They attacked each other. They killed one another. They, they don't like each other. They might live communally and be fine. Like mind it for the longest time, just live together and didn't hurt each other until they're going to molt. In case you didn't know, crabs molt just like tarantulas, just like any invertebrate. They will shed their exoskeleton, so they will come out of their old skin. But what these crabs will do is they will preemptively eliminate threats during their molt, or for their molt. So if a crab's getting ready to molt, he's gonna actively seek out the other inhabitants of the enclosure and kill them. That's what happened with mine. So um, my male, went in pre-molt. You can tell pre-molt much the same way as with any invertebrate. Their colors will get paler, they'll stop eating, they'll hide more often, usually indicates pre-molt. So what my male did when he entered pre-molt was he attacked my female and ripped off one of the claws. So I woke up one morning to just a single claw laying there. So I instantly dug them up and separated the male. And it was that point I realized like Okay, yeah, I've read about this online loads of time. Was like, it's working fine for me, so surely these people just will be unlucky. Like, no, those people aren't unlucky. These crabs do not do well together. They will kill each other during molts, or right before molts even. They won't even wait till they molt. It's not like with scorpions or something, they usually get preyed upon during molting. No, they, they kill each other when getting ready for a molt as a preemptive measure. So if you think about getting these crabs, only get one. And I recommend the female because they look nicer than the males. <laughs> Sorry, males, but yeah, the females get a little bit more colorful. Also, every single crab, Halloween crab, that you will find for sale is wild caught. There is no single breeding done by these in captivity since they require the ocean to release their eggs into and then hatch in the sea. And then the little babies will come out of the sea and get on land. Now, this is not possible to do in the hobby, or at least it's never been done before. It might be possible, but no one's successfully done it before. Which means if you're against wildcat animals, you do not want to purchase a Halloween crab. I'm against wildcat animals. I did not know this, however, when I bought the crabs. 
So that was a bit of a bummer when I found that out. Because think of it this way. These animals used to living in the wild, having all the space in the world, being able to burrow, forage and all that stuff, and then it's suddenly shoved in this little enclosure. I don't support that. If something's captive bred, it's kept in um, enclosures his entire life, doesn't know what the wild is, so in a sense it doesn't know what it's missing, I guess. So that makes it a little bit more okay to me. It's, it's a touchy subject, but I don't support wild-caught animals. So being that these animals are only wild-caught, they cannot breed in captivity because they rely on the ocean. And a lot of people don't seem to know how to care for these properly. I had a hard time figuring out the proper way. It really makes me think that these aren't an animal that should be kept in captivity. But they're here now. And we, all we can do now is give them the best care that we possibly can. So, what do you need to care for these? An awful lot for how often you see them. <laughs> um, these guys require a water dish with clear water and a human environment because they need constant humidity to um, breathe, kind of like isopods. You want at least three times as much substrate as like death and substrate as the biggest crab in your enclosure and she only should have one really so just three times as high as the crab is because these crabs burrow and they will burrow a lot and they will tunnel a lot and you will hardly ever see them except for at night and then if you do see them at night and they see you they will scurry right back into the burrow so you will really hardly ever see them ever <laughs> you will basically never see your crab and it'll take up an awful lot of place space because that's a pretty tall enclosure and you should have like um, I would say at least 60 long 60 centimeters long so re realistically you're looking at like a 60 by 50 enclosure like 60 60 wide 50 high and then like 40 or 50 what uh, deep again okay so <laughs> I'm not good with measurements 60 wide 50 deep 50 high that's a good enclosure for one crab and then you want to put a bottom layer of cocoa fiber this a uh, cocoa fiber and sphagnum moss this is to hold humidity in and to keep spring tails alive and then you want play sand for the rest or you can just do completely full of cocoa fiber that works as well I kept my crabs like that in the start and then I swapped over to the play sand because play sand is a lot cheaper and the more experienced keeper seems to be keeping their crabs on play sand and might have been on fine play sand holds burrow as well if you keep it moist so it worked so uh, yeah play sand works as well or you can just do cocoa fiber it's up to you really but you need a lot of substrate so they can burrow in it um, you want to top the surface off with like a moss or leaf litter. This will help hold in the humidity and they eat the leaf litter and stuff, so that works. You want two water dishes, one with clear water and one with salt water. Now the salt water is debatable. I've never used salt water before and mine seem to be doing okay. But apparently they need to drink salt water, so I've started supplying it as well now. But I've not noticed them drinking from it yet, so um, I mean rather to be safe than sorry I guess, so I would supply a little bowl of salt water as well. This can be the same water used for hermit crabs, so that's fine. As for food, these eat pretty much anything. Like I feed mine tortoise pellets, they seem to enjoy those, like carnivorous tortoise pellets. They contain like proteins and then I give them vegetables and stuff. Or you can just give them meat. But if you give them meat, I would recommend cooking the meat because these scraps like to make food storages in their tunnels. And they'll make a tunnel and store food in there. So if you put raw meat in there, the raw meat will molt instantly and cause for a really smelly enclosure and you don't want that. So speaking on mold, you definitely, definitely, definitely want springtails in your enclosure because these scraps are pretty dirty. <laughs> like I said, they'll food underground without a way of you accessing it the food will mold and your entire enclosure will get smelly so I would highly suggest you put springtails in there because they will help combat that a bit and they won't bother your crabs I used pure cocoa fiber the springtails are amazing in there they thrive they they bred more than in my breeder tub so yeah if you use play sand it's a little bit more difficult to keep the springtails alive but if you keep a full water dish they usually hang out in the water dish or they'll hang out down in the cocoa fiber but they seem to, to have issues getting through the sand 
as in they can't really travel through the sand to the bottom of the cocoa fiber that well. So only if the crab really burrows down to the cocoa fiber, then they can hide in there as well. But yeah. And what else I want to say? These are really not communal. Like you don't want to keep them communal at all. Generally, my experience with these crabs has been pretty boring. They're, they're just a boring pet. You don't see them. You don't. You can't interact with them. You don't see them eat or hunt or hunt or anything. They they just. You know they're in there somewhere, and that's about all. If you do ever catch a glimpse of them, they run away instantly back into their burrows. You're constantly stressing if they didn't kill each other if you keep multiple ones. So yeah, um, I don't know. I'm kind of disappointed in them as a pet. I don't think they should be in the pet trait. I think there's different crabs that you could keep if you do want a crab. Like vampire crabs seem pretty cool. They seem to be doing alright in the hobby. Yeah. I don't know man. If you want a Halloween crab, I would think twice if this is the pet for you. Because you'll be putting a lot of time, a lot of food, eat quite a lot. As in, like, you give him a varied diet, you give him tomatoes once, you give him salad once, you give him an orange once, you give him mango. I heard they eat scrambled egg as well. The, um, what's it called? The apple, not apple juice, but like, you know, the apple mousse, I don't know what you call it. And they require protein, they require calcium to molt, so you need to give them, like, cuttlefish bone. They need a whole lot of stuff. What they eat is pretty readily available. You can just Google it. The first things that you have like a list of food they eat. That's usually pretty accurate. That's mainly the setup. Oh, heat. These need heat as well. You need to keep these moist, but you want to keep them like above the 20 degrees Celsius. So the heat mat against the back of the enclosure works, not below it, because they will burrow down if they get too hot. You know, like most tarantulas will too. You just don't want to no under tank here, just based on the side of the heat lamp. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about them. They're really not worth the effort. If you really like the way they look, go for it, I would say. You know, if you think this is for you and think like, knowing all this, oh, this crab is still awesome, I still want it. But I mean, sure, go for it. Keep the crabs, you know. You do you. But, um, yeah, they're not for me. I'm kind of disappointed in them. I won't get rid of them because um, unless someone comes up and is like, I really want these and I can provide them proper care. But yeah. If you ever think about getting crabs, or if you know someone that's thinking about getting crabs, please link in this video. There's a lot of misinformation about these. Well, really, they're not that difficult to care for. It's just difficult to find the proper care for them. So yeah, I would suggest finding a Facebook group or something. There's a few around there that have got some good information. But yeah, this is pretty much all I wanted to talk about. I hope this was informational and discouraged some people from getting a Halloween crap. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. This was a pretty boring video, I know. Just kind of me talking, but hey. Thank you for watching. And uh, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And see you guys later. Bye.